Hello, my name is Reddy Tyle. I'm the program director at YEP. I'd like to formally welcome you to our panel discussion on project management. Before we get started, I'd like to do a quick introduction on YEP for those who may be joining us for the first time. Your Ethiopian Professionals, or YEP, is a 5013C nonprofit, non-political, and non-religious organization founded in 2010. Our mission is to inspire, educate, and empower the Ethiopian community and to make a positive impact in the world. Through our four pillar programs, we aim to build that strong community to share ideas, resources, and skills to be able to enrich lives. As part of our career development program, today we're bringing you a panel discussion on the field of project management. We have three experienced panelists who will talk us through some discussion questions, uh, and we'll begin with introductions and talk through these topics. At the end, we'll also take audience questions, so feel free to drop your questions in the chat. Now, to bring in our panelists, we have Lulit Tesfai, Partner and Division Director at Enterprise Knowledge. Okay. Alicia Cyrus, Principal Consultant at Slalom Built. And last but not least, Adam Ndale, Project Manager at Mindful Leadership Consulting. Thank you all for sharing your time with us today. Uh, so we can go ahead and start with your introductions. Please tell us a little bit about yourself, your current role, career path, and any other career or professional highlights you may want to discuss. Lulit, I'll start with you. Thank you, Redit. Thank you for having us here today. It's good to see you, everybody. Um, as Redit called out, my name is uh, Lulit. I am a, a partner and a director of uh, a data and information management division at Enterprise Knowledge. It's a, an Arlington, Virginia-based consultancy uh, focused on uh, uh, technical consulting and uh, strategy design and implementation of technical solutions. Uh, I am also one of the co-founders of YEP, uh, goes back to G20, uh, 2020 at this, uh, uh, 2010 at this point, and um, now I serve on the board at Capacity um, as, a, uh, as a vice chair. Um, my background is in technical project management. Um, I'll give you a little bit about how I got here uh, once we get in going with the conversation, uh, but overall, um, I work on um, multiple projects, especially technical projects on you know, advanced data management capabilities at my current role. Um, I have uh, at this point over 15 years of experience uh, holding different capacities on projects. And at this point I have, um, I'm overseeing 12 to 15 multi-million pro uh, mil uh, million dollar projects at a given time. So I'm looking forward to having this conversation with my other uh, panelists here to share experience and uh, hear from you with your questions or um, uh, learn from you on where you are in your journey. Thank you, Lily. You. Thank you, Alicia. Hi, also want to say thank you um, for having me. My name again, Alicia Cyrus. I'm a principal consultant at Slalom Build, which is a division of Slalom Consulting, Seattle-based company with over 26 offices across the globe. Um, I have almost 20 years of experience in, in various scrum-based roles, traditional project management, business analysis, and agile coaching. And now I spend my time helping companies dream bigger um, and deliver faster um, various projects from cloud to product based, uh, web based management and mobile applications and um, helping them deliver faster. So thank you. Wonderful. Thanks, Alicia. Adam. Hi, everyone. Um, very happy to be here. Um, as I was introduced, my name is Adam Baru. Um, I am Talk speaking to you all from my home in Silver Spring, Maryland. I'm very excited to be a part of this. Um, and a little bit about my background. I was had a political science. My route is a little bit uh, winding. I had a background in political science. That's what I studied. And then after that, I went into law. I was a paralegal. And then after that, I was in business. Uh, I was a, in immigration law as a business immigration analyst. And so I did that for about five years. And I realized the, on track to go to law school, but I realized that wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. And at the same time, I had um, a couple of entrepreneurial things that I was working on. I built an app um, and I, I and a number of other things. And so then the pandemic happened and it made me reevaluate what it is exactly that I want to be doing. And I realized that law wasn't necessarily it. And in my capacity as a business immigration analyst, 
it was a lot of project management. A lot of the work that we did was very much similar to that of a PM. And so I thought, I figured, hey, that's something that could be useful in many different industries. Let me look into being a project manager formally. And so I started my role as a project manager four months ago. So I'm a little bit newer on the block uh, compared to my distinguished colleagues, but I'm um, super excited about it. Super excited to share my insights about what I've learned about how to get into project management and um, how you can, without necessarily the most direct experience in project management, how you can um, land a role in project management. So thank you. Super excited to share insight and to gain insight from you all. Wonderful. Thank you all so much. So I'd like to start the discussion on how to enter the project management field. As Adam alluded, there's a lot of different paths and ways to get into the field. We'd like to know what kinds of tools or trainings would you consider to be important when thinking about breaking into the field? Okay. Who's kicking us off? <laughs> Go ahead, Lily. <laughs> All right. Um, so I was actually going to offer it to someone else this time, but uh, I have, um, that's a good question. And I think Adam as the person who has the most recent experience, I would love to hear your perspective on what I'm about to say and where you are on that journey. Uh, but I would say for me, it helps me to think about the position, the, uh, the project management having kind of like a, a Venn diagram of like three, four facets, right? Like, uh, think in terms of one area is um, the standard pr project management skills, planning, uh, process, strategy, the um, communications, facilitation, stakeholder management, the actual discipline uh, and building your skills around that. And then the other facet of it is the domain knowledge of what you would be managing. So if you're in the finance space, understanding that domain expertise that would allow you to deliver manage your projects in finance. If you are in technology, what type of technology are you working with? So thinking in terms of that domain knowledge and expertise. Uh, the third part of it is like formal training and certifications, uh, things that will make you stand out on, in the industry uh, um, and also show that you, know, you have the basic training and the basic requirements covered. Uh, and then the last bit of it is experience. And I think we're going to spend a little bit more time talking about that, but that practice, hands-on practice of managing a project, learning from, from on the ground of, you know, what works and what doesn't. So if you're looking across these four things, I think you have to have a little bit of it covered in order to be able to start breaking into the industry and start thinking about, uh, as you can imagine, there's no one linear path into project management. It is more about looking at it from these different angles and uh, perspectives and then going across this, this kind of circle and thinking around what are the bits and pieces that you should build around you uh, to become that project manager or the, build that experience in that formal education. I, I think that's a really great way of putting it. I think it's a really good image that you put in saying that it isn't one way. And I think that if you're lacking in one of the areas, um, you want to emphasize the other areas where you are like more proficient. And maybe you should focus more on getting those certificates, depending on what area of project management you're looking to get into. Um, and so for myself, I had a background of law, of immigration law, and I was able to and I guess we'll talk more about um, what kind of experience you need later on as well. But I would say that if you get those certificates, if you have your PMP, if you have an, if you get those certificates, you're coming in with a with a very uh, good advantage. It's not for me. I actually don't. I did not have the, my PMP yet. I, I was working on that. Um, but I did have ex extensive experience, and I was able to relate that to project management, like you said, stakeholder management, um, mo managing multiple projects at the same time, having um, using like different project management and client relations management software. And I think if you can hit those key points and if you can relate your experience to that, and if you can really do your homework and really understand what it is that you'll be doing, so platforms like monday.com, platforms like Asana, um, methodologies like Waterfall and Agile. If you can like learn about a lot of these things and see how if you have it, one, you can train yourself and you can get the, that those certificates. You can do the work to, to learn all of that. And two, you can emphasize what your experience has been 
that relates to that. And so I think that's what's really benefited me is my ability to just really draw parallels. And I was blessed in that it, there were a lot of direct parallels. It just like it wasn't when you think immigration law, you don't necessarily think project management. But when the scale that I was doing immigration law at, it required a level of project management because of how many different cases, how many different types of projects essentially we were doing. And so really anything can be a project is how I see it. And so it's it's just the ability to make sure that everything stays on track. You the the goal is achieved with minimal mistakes, with minimal like within a within a certain budget, within certain constraints, depending on your industry, and just making sure that everything is organized and that everything is being accomplished that you that you had intended to accomplish. And so, I think, um, yeah. So I think I think I really like how you put it. I think that m on my end, I didn't have the most direct experience, but I would say that I was able to relate a lot of my previous experience, and that I think my experience with monday.com and some of those methodologies that i mentioned i think those are good gateways into project management is how it worked for me at least yeah i agree adam i didn't i didn't really have a, a direct path into project management I, I started in it and i agree project management can you know cross bounds you know you, if you're planning a wedding you're doing project management <laughs> you know right. if you're planning a trip it's project management um, but for IT, um, I was fortunate to have an opportunity in graduate school um, and, and started working as a junior PM um, in a consulting firm. And so when Lulit talks about that domain knowledge, it can cross boundaries because I've worked in, you know, healthcare, um, finance, um, just direct IT uh, and technical places. Um, and so I'm always learning. And even now, every four to eight months, I'm spinning up a new team and my focus is different. Um, but, you know, I've held a number of roles. Again, I started traditional project management on an opportunity. Um, and then I actually shifted into business analysis. Um, and then traditional project management, I will say, in that environment, um, did not really fit how I worked with my teams. I'm, I'm a very people focused person. So I think um, outside of project management, you have to remember that one, you're focused on your organizational skills. Um, that is something you are continually having to develop. Um, but the biggest is that, you know, no matter what type of project management you're doing, your focus is people. Um, and they are helping you accomplish that goal. So working on your communication skills is key. Um, and that is something that, you know, I continue to work on throughout my career. Um, but outside of that, just being able to be flexible, be adaptable, learn. Um, so again, whether you're focused on, you know, achieving certificates or taking trainings, um, all of it just helps you kind of build your knowledge to being able to deliver successful projects. If I can add to that, I love that because I think you went into, I, I heard two things from both of you, which is, you know, or all, all of us, none of us, I think, woke up and said, we want to be a project manager when we grow up, right? Like it's, I don't think it was a thing <laughs> back then right. even, but at, uh, I, I think at the end of the day, we all have this path. But the other piece that Alicia, I want to add to yours is um, it's also like, what's your personal inclination, right? Uh, you know, it's, there's, Alicia said she's people focused um, and also, you know, found her own way of navigating the traditional world of project management. I think it's important to take a step back. And this is something that I actually did. Adam, I share a similar background with you. I went to law school. I actually practiced for about a year and a half and ship pivoted, right? Uh, one of the things that I, I did there is, um, you know, one of my, uh, and that part of it is also me moving to the U.S. and being exposed to a lot of opportunities than just being a lawyer uh, and the variety that, you know, the topics and domain expertise project management brings. So uh, as I was going through that exercise, I was thinking, you know, what is, I, I do like organizing. I do like planning. I do like doing these things. I do like people. I like talking to stakeholders. And I'm like, you mean I can get paid for it? <laughs> yes, that is that is my, you know, my career path. So uh, it's it's really important to think about, to think about it also, your personal skill sets. Are you passionate about these types of things that project management requires? Then anyone can be a project manager, but I think a stellar project manager really personally is driven by these aspects of project management, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah. I very much identify with what both of you guys just said, um, because like, like I am, I would also say that I'm people, people driven. I think I have been able to benefit from a pretty good communication skills and I do enjoy working with various stakeholders. I do find myself very organized. And so it was like, I am grateful for the pandemic to a degree because as terrible as it was for other reasons, um, but it, it allowed me to reevaluate what it is that I'm good at, what it is that I like. And I, and I figured I'm thinking being like law for me, I saw as a, a path towards, you know, it was just more so the credentials that I appreciated. It was more so the, like the, the prestige and what have it. And I realized that what I would really enjoy doing day to day is working with people, keeping things organized, leading, leading and managing. And I sought out an opportunity that fit that. And, and I was looking at a number of different roles and it all just kind of came together in project management. And so um, I very much identify with what both of you just said. Yeah. And I would add to that problem solving. I mean, that's, you know, no matter how much you plan, <laughs> I'm sure both of you can attest to the fact that there's always something that comes up. So I really see um, project management as problem solving and I enjoy it. I mean, it doesn't mean it doesn't come without frustration, but, you know, there's always something new that's coming up, something new that you're responding to, um, particularly with clients. If, you know, if, if they're affected by law or financial regulation um, or something new in the market, um, it's always a new problem that kind of pops up. And so um, that's definitely a skill that that you have to have. And, and just be forward thinking, being able to kind of anticipate some things, but also, again, be flexible and adaptable enough to respond. That's actually a wonderful segue. <laughs> <laughs> so a wonderful segue into our next question. We'd like to hear a little bit about some of the challenges that you faced on different projects, the lessons learned, the outcome, and how you overcame. Well, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, please, Alicia, go ahead. <laughs> uh, wow. So there, you know, when I when I think about that, there are a couple of, you know, things I can I can keep it project level, but I do think it, it is important to look at the broader. I am a woman. I am a black woman um, in IT. Um, I've spent all of my career in IT. And so, um, you know, as much as, you know, we love to see growth in a number of areas, unfortunately, it's it's part, um, or I guess I should say par for the course. Um, oftentimes, I'm dealing with cultural differences. I work a lot with people overseas. Um, and so I've encountered, you know, cultural differences that I, some that I've had to respect and some that I've had to have help kind of navigate. Um, and then even, you know, in terms of being just Black, you know, dealing with microaggressions and, again, you know, encountering different cultures on projects and having different types of clients in different parts of the world and the U.S. sometimes. Um, and so, you know, it's I think starting with knowing your values and knowing your boundaries. Um, I operate with integrity and honesty and transparency. I do what is right. Um, you know, that has probably cost me at times um, or cost me on certain opportunities, but I was glad to give it up because it didn't feel like an opportunity. Um, the other part of that is knowing my boundaries. I operate with respect. It is an agile value, agile based value, but it's also an Alicia value. I give respect and I expect it. Um, and so I, I focus on creating environments where everyone can kind of come to the table, you know, create an environment of safety and be who they are. Um, I recognize that we are beyond um, our, our general roles of project manager. Um, we're a whole person and people have, you know, as they say, life be life. And, and so there are a lot of things outside of the pandemic that people experience that you have to be sensitive to. That said, we're here to do a job. Um, and so we have to, you know, kind of keep that focus. But, you know, when, you know, when I say those values, that's pretty easy. When I say boundaries, for example, I started in an organization and, you know, I would work seven to four. So I'm walking out of the door one day at 4 p.m. And, and there's a manager who sees me walking out and he's like, well, you know, where are you going? I was like, well, I'm headed home. Uh, and he said, uh, well, it's four o'clock. You know, you're not married. You don't have kids. And I said, well, I won't find a husband or have children in here. So I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, and <laughs> a little spicier in my earlier days. Um, but, you know, it's a boundary. You know, you, you do have to kind of define how you will work with people and how you expect them to work with you. And, you know, I, I'm sure you all can have, you probably have examples too, where you kind of have to, again, just know your values and, and 
create those boundaries. I would agree with that. I would say that there have been moments, not like I said, I've been in my new role for about four months now, uh, going on five, and there hasn't been too much of that just yet. But there's, you know, throughout my career, there's definitely lots of times where you encounter different microaggressions, people not respecting boundaries. Um, and I would say that early on in my career, I kind of, I wasn't as, I, I kind of took what I could get sometimes more than I should. And I, and I didn't, I didn't set boundaries as well as I should have. As I've gotten older over time, now I, I you know, you, you begin to have some leverage, you begin to being, become more confident in yourself and realizing what your worth is and what is okay and what's not okay. And so that's been a process for me, I would say. And I'm very happy about how now, like, like, like you said, Alicia, I very much will always be respectful. You'll never, you'll never catch me being disrespectful to, especially in a work setting, let alone in my personal life. Um, so I expect the same respect. And so that has been a, a challenge of like learning my worth and learning how to set those boundaries and how to, and how to communicate that with your superiors. Cause I think with your, with your peers, it's a lot easier, but how do you communicate that with a boss? If, if something is not okay, if, and, and so I think you have to stand your ground. And I think that a lot of times a boss, a good, a good, a good superior, a good supervisor, a good boss will appreciate that, will respect that. And they can take it as a learning moment. And if not, um, you still have to do that regardless. Um, and so to, to your question, Radiate, about just other challenges that I've dealt with, I would say specifically related to project management um, outside of, you know, just like the personal kinds of issues. I would say there's at, at times like there, you can be overwhelmed by the amount of different projects, depending on how many projects you're working on at once, you can be overwhelmed. You can wonder where to start, how to go about things. And I think that's where you lean into your training. But just to get into that a little bit, I think you can't, you just have to have proper structures in place that like you have to have a bunch of different stop gaps and different ways of tracking, depending on what you're working on. But I think you can't rely on your memory and you have to have just lots of structures in place to make sure that you're holding yourself accountable and that so that nothing is falling through the cracks. I think that's something that I really pride myself on and I focus on is making sure that everything is super organized from the onset so that while you're going through the project, it, it's a lot easier to manage doing the hard work in the beginning so that it's easier throughout the project, um, I would say. And so and then just, you know, just like you would with any type of difficult task, you should split it up into its parts because anything can be overwhelming when you're looking at it as the whole. And so that goes into the organization. You just have to, um, you know, split it up into its different portions. And even those parts, you split it up into more parts and it becomes a lot more manageable that way, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with both. It really resonates with me too. A couple of things I would add to your experiences, um, and I'm sure Adam, you, you're going through this right now, is I think one of the challenges um, I experienced, especially switching careers from law to project management, is that barrier to entry. Uh, in, on day one, you're expected to have some sort of experience or some sort of background and just be, being able to build uh, these capabilities. Uh, you can take, you know, um, training online, you can participate in a few things. But earlier when I talked about how I came up with that like four faceted Venn diagram is there's no one answer, right? You have to do a little bit of networking, uh, a little bit of the actual formal training, maybe even take a step back make a lateral move to join an organization that will give you an opportunity at entry level internship volunteer you know whatever you can take until you build that formal experience that looks good on your resume right that's that is one of the challenges and i will say i don't know if this is solved yet and i would love to hear from all of you on this but uh project management was just recently became a recognized thing right like a recognized field when i say just the past two decades, but it compared to other very formal disciplines, it is an, a still something that's changing, right? Agile came into play. Uh, so people are wearing multiple hats and thinking about within an organization, what is that career path, right? Uh, project management, program manager, PMO, and then what? Uh, if you really think about it, you, it's so quick to hit that 
glass ceiling or uh, just get stuck in the cog, you know, there are there are still some ways we're still navigating this industry in this career. So that I think that still remains to be a challenge for a lot of organizations to define a career path. And that was one of the challenges that I went through in some places uh, where most of it is on you to kind of figure out where you fit and create a, a, the position that fits you. Another piece when it comes to communications and you know uh, just being people focused is being able to being comfortable to push back and speak up, especially being from you know uh, where we are from, uh, it, like Ethiopia. That culture, that culture shock for me. The hardest thing was to say no and push back. Um, and, you know, be a little bit more assertive when you are representing your team, because your team is really looking to you to be their voice, uh, to to also create that balance for them. So these were one of the, you know, a few of the challenges that came to mind as we we're, you know, talking about um, how it's been the past, you know, few years going, being in this industry and in space. I very much I agree with that. I think that it's the cultural component is, um, it's, it's really interesting, and I think it's something that we, we really should drill into our community is that because I think it's very much ingrained in us to be miskeen, to be like, to, to like kind of like be very, to be cooperative and to not want to say no to anything and to, and not to push back. And so I think that that was something that I had to learn as well, that it was uh, that, you, that you need to stand your ground. And I, I think you'll be more you'll be more respected, more appreciated by your team and your superiors for doing that. And so um, I very much agree with with that. That's, it's, it's like antithetical to our culture almost, though, because it's especially when you're dealing with people that are older than you. Um, oh, yeah. The question questioning authority uh, is a big culture shock for a lot of people <laughs> coming from, you know, the more courteous background in our culture specifically, but mm -hmm. even just like as women, right? Uh, it's easy to be spoken over uh, as, you know, people of color. They're, we're a triple threat, if you will. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but it's, 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 you know, I wanted to go back to something Adam said, you know, I, again, I'm in, well, we're all in consulting, but, you know, like I said, I'm spinning up a new project every four to eight months and I start each project the same way. It kind of gives me a balance when I'm walking to an ambiguous situation. So there's certain things I organize around my team's folders, certain things that I organize for the team itself and people and how we kind of kick off the project. And so, um, you know, over time, as you you know, build your experience, you figure out how to do that. Right. That, that didn't come without me having to do that time and time again and figure out what I like. Um, and then even to the point, Lily, like you said, culturally, you know, clearly I started off with a little bit of space. Um, but as I've mentored people and, and um, you know, work to help, you know, others um, in my field, I've also had to learn cultural differences. It's like, you know, it's very it seems very easy to me. No, you know, just because we hold different titles on this project, you know, we're all one team. So, no, it's not a problem. But I have people that I have to continuously coach because, um, either from, you know, depending upon their home country, depending upon um, the way that they grew up, the level of respect. Some people come from military background and, you know, have a very difficult time um, speaking to someone who may not be holding, you know, pulling their weight on the project, but, oh, that's a director. I can't say that to them. And it's like, well, no, we're, we're all team members. It's OK. But it's having to be mindful of that and coach people through it and, and kind of help them find their voice in their own way. So. Very good points. Agreed. So you all kind of alluded to the idea of the project management field being somewhat new in the past two decades. What would you say since the time that you've spent, especially Lily and Alicia, 15, 20 years in the field, how has it changed in the last five years, right? We are now introducing more into agile and more project management is using that agile methodology. How has that changed? And how has that affected the work that you do and how you manage your teams? Um, well, um, well, agile practices, you know, have, have been around since the mid to late 90s. And I started in, a, in my first project management role. Technically, we were practicing agile in 2006. But I would say I really didn't start truly practicing the values until 2013. You know, people would call themselves agile or wagile or all of these different phrases, but they weren't doing it. It was just another way of continuing back practices. Um, 
I think what's changed in the last five years and maybe even 10 um, with kind of the proliferation of conferences and certifications, I think it's given some structure, you know, to to agile practice, especially around Scrum or even Kanban. And, and I, I know a lot of that has grown even within PMI. They've kind of branched out a little bit into the agile space as well. So I think um, with it still being a newer discipline, the work has really been put in um, by people to create some definition of this practice, which, you know, obviously I appreciate. Um, I think one of the things that's changed in the last five years is, is kind of, you know, when, you know, social media has just boomed. Right. So, you know, anytime I'm scrolling and I do scroll, um, you can see whether it's an Afro tech post or some other type of, you know, uh, you know, minority based focus. It's like it's so easy to get into project management, you know, take a course, you know, but it's not. We've, we've all said that, you know, we had an opportunity that helped us to get into the field. Right. And you do that by networking. You do that by going to conferences in addition to getting certifications and kind of getting that practice. So while I feel like the knowledge around our field is greater now, which is wonderful, it offers another um, career choice for people. Um, but I also think sometimes, you know, the bad information is there. And so really getting connected with a good network will help you understand what we do um, and even some of the ambiguity of what we do. Uh, and then if it's something that you really want to pursue, now you have more opportunity to find um, the right kind of knowledge bases to get you into project management. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely agree. I think a couple of things that I want to pull out from what you said, Alicia, is uh, one is, you know, it's, um, it, and I'll start with the bad, it has become a formal field. It has become actually recognized in universities, right? Like now you can be, uh, you know, take an MBA in project management. Uh, it is, it's a, a real discipline that you can actually get a degree around, uh, not just the certification, but also at the same time, we're seeing in the past, especially in the past five, five to six years, these agile certifications, even the PMP has become commoditized, right? It is it because it's becoming advertised as the, the shortcut to get into the industry. And we're seeing, we're seeing this, I'm seeing this, I'm, uh, I know Alicia, you're also hiring for project managers. When I'm looking at resumes, um, and looking at you know all these lists of certifications, I don't look at that anymore. What I look at is like, what does your experience look like? How do you think about project management? Mm -hmm. uh, and depending on what kind of project management, that understanding, right? There is, uh, for simplicity, let's say there are two types. There's the project management and technology. Mm -hmm. There's project management in uh, nonprofit organizations like international development, for instance, which is starkly like very different from you know the software development life cycle type of project management so that understanding of what type of project management we're talking about what type of industry that we're talking about uh, that perspective is what's more important in when you get into the field and then once you um you start getting into the field what we're seeing is and to alicia's point there are so many tools now that can help you get organized productivity tools. Um, you automate some of the tasks that you have. I think we're all familiar with the asanas and the jiras and the Trello boards, but I'm thinking about like even other things like that would allow you to set up calendar invites uh, through even a project management tool. So in the past 10 years, we did not have these, right? These have developed and COVID has fast forward the innovation in project management. It's like sped up the process. Now, um, I would imagine, I think anyone who is in the project management field would have to have some sort of tech savviness uh, to be able to succeed in this space. Um, and that's one change that we're seeing uh, as part of the, the, the this industry, this new project management is, uh, is that we have now the processes, the tools, the supporting environment, that ecosystem uh, that will take off, you know, some of the uh, the challenges that we had in traditional project management. Okay, I I can't speak to this as much because I'm you know a relative newcomer to the field. But that being said, I, I appreciate everything that you guys said, and I appreciate coming into it at a time where it does have a lot of these various tools um, 
at your disposal for you to make things a lot easier when you manage these projects. And so I'm coming at it, I guess, in its, you know, in its golden era, but I also appreciate Alicia's point saying about, and your point, Lubith, about there being a lot of bad information out there. And it's interesting to hear that you don't consider the um, you don't you don't consider the certificates and the different trainings as much as their experience. Um, I think I appreciate that because I think that if you have the transferable experience, I think that is I think that is more telling of to your ability to do a good job at it. Um, and so I, I, it's, that's really interesting to hear because uh, in, my, in my mind, it does give you a very big advantage to have to have those and, and i'm not saying that you say that it doesn't but um it's interesting that you value that it's just you, you're going to value a lot more of their experience and so i think that that's that's good to that's good yeah. to share yeah adam i think one uh, thing i would add to that is it's not that it's not important i mean we all know we're all pmps at this uh, this table or in this room a virtual room and we all know how much that takes to get to get right like the dedication the study the discipline alicia and i actually went through that together a few many moons ago at this point but um that whole process but if you really think about it uh, that says something about your character right like the fact that you're able to achieve and accomplish that uh and also, I mean, PMI is, you know, a known institution, is a very respected organization. So it also backs you up. Uh, that I think that is that is good to have. But I would still weigh more of, you know, what you have done, even if you have like two or three years of experience, how you think about it, how, how you talk about it is, I think, more more weight for me than um, than the list of certifications, I would say. And I would say, Adam, you know, much respect to you. I mean, that is, you know, the ideal candidate, someone who is looking at their current experience and looking how um, it ties into project management. That that would be what I'm interested in. And it's not so much about the years of experience. It does help. Um, but I'm also looking again, and you mentioned that, Adam, you know, your skills around organization, around planning, um, and as we talked about how you solve a problem. I've worked with people in project management who come from librarian backgrounds, teaching, um, nonprofit, all types of fields. But what we have in common is even if we have our own approach, we've defined a way of how we organize and plan. So that's really the, the crux of the experience that I'm looking for. And if someone is making that transition, I would hope that they would have done, you know, similar exercises to you is what in my field, what have I been doing in, in my field? Okay, yes, I'm immigration law, but I've been essentially, you know, doing project management. If I'm in nonprofit, I've been planning projects around events and around, you know, um, you know, kind of the clientele who kind of give, and the philanthropists that give into the organization and they've been managing those dollars. That's what, you know, what we want to see. I hear that. Mm -hmm. um, and one, one other thing I wanted to add just to the question of what else has changed. And I think this is across industries. It's not just project management, um, but just the fact that everything's like going virtual now. And, and I think that's, that's huge. And that has huge ramifications for how you go about the job, how you succeed in the job, because I think, especially if you're, it's a people-focused industry, it can be challenging challenging for some. And I think it takes a different kind of approach and effort to make sure that you're forming those connections with the different stakeholders, with your colleagues, or with your superiors. Um, and so I think that is a interesting and change that it seems like it's not, it's not going away. It seems like that's the direction we're headed. And um, yeah, so I think that's another big change that's happening in our industry and across the industries. Mm -hmm. So thinking about where the field has been and where it currently is, what do you anticipate the next five to 10 years looking like, right? And what implications does that have for those that are interested in joining the field? And what sort of advice would you give them? It's a good question. Uh, and I'm sure we'll all have different perspectives on this, but I think one of the things that we were alluding to, uh, and I called this out earlier, is it's becoming very tech focused when I say that uh, being able to navigate these different technologies. And that's another thing I'll come out and boldly say. I like seeing Jira and Trello and resumes, but that could be trained, right? These are things that you, know, uh, you can train, you can pick up. I think what's more important as the world evolves as fast as it is, 
is the ability to adjust and change with it. So agility in your mind frame is the most important thing for any project manager of the future. Um, technology will change, we'll have to change with it. Uh, we used Microsoft Project Manager 10 years ago. Now we are doing 500 different tools, right? So it is what is important is that mind frame of agility. Things will change. It's not that one and done. I got this certification. I got this tool down. Now I'm a project manager. That world is behind us. I think that that says that I think that stands for a lot of the careers that uh, that we are going through within the industry, but especially for project management, because you're working on different topics, different domains, uh, different technologies, different tools. You have to be really comfortable with that change and welcome that change and adjust with it. So having a, a process, I think I love what Alicia said about uh, something that gives me balance when there's a lot of ambiguity. What is that for you? Is it a way of how you kick off a project? Is it a way of how you organize your folders uh, to Alicia's point? Once you find that a balance, you have to be able to change with, with technology and with industry and be tech savvy as much as possible. I would agree with that. I think that you have to be tech savvy in this in this day and age, especially in this industry. And I think that you have to be able to constantly be always be willing to be a student, constantly learn and adjust your processes. Because I think, like Alicia said, I very much agree. You have to. I think about it as having a structure or a process for anything, any project that you're working on. And I think um, you have to be able to adjust that project over time. Because I think that a lot of these, right? I think that they'll be. The lot the the different tools that we use right now it'll become more and more centralized things will be more and more automated i don't think we have to worry about the industry like dying because of, like of the software doing enough because ceos and whatnot they're not going to want to do the the managing of the project so i think it, it's here for the long haul but i think that you do have to be tech savvy and i think that you have to be able to um very learn how to adjust to the, the new technology that's emerging so i think that is for sure going to be the case in the next five to ten years yeah i think we've seen the shift um and i think it'll only continue i mean my recent clients are in automotive services healthcare, um and you know essentially now most organizations are becoming almost it organizations that you know even with banking you know we, there's a dependency on mobile applications um, so while everything is kind of shifting to that technology base, to Adam's point, you know, we're not going away. Um, I can, you know, and again, bold statement, Lily, I can, you know, I can break down a project and plan a project using a whiteboard and note cards. I don't need a tool. The tool is only as effective as I am. So if I, you know, again, it, the focus for me is, and, and it kind of goes back to one of those skills, being able to ask the right questions, being able to take what we call requirements and break those down and communicate those well to development um, or to even stakeholders, because I do work with some seasoned project managers who are also kind of struggling um, to, to kind of come into a more tech, tech savvy world um, because it's different. It's a different type of way of working. Um, but, you know, we're online again, Adam, I don't see that going away. I love working from home, but I, I put a lot into the people that I'm working with every day. Um, and that is, again, that's a big piece of it. It's the problem solving. It's the communication. It's having that people focus. So even though we're virtual, you know, I can look at the faces on the screen and I can see a shift and I can, you know, check on that person afterwards to make sure that, you know, they're okay. Um, and, and that means a lot when we are, we're all working towards a goal and I can adjust around that. But outside of delivering a project, again, my focus is the people. I want to make sure they're good. Um, and so I think um, as we continue this more technology based shift into the future, not forgetting people, not forgetting how we really do what we do. So again, like I said, if I can do it on a whiteboard, I can do it in JIRA. So again, like Lulit said, I can train you on a tool, but as long as I can see that you have the skills and you're, you're continually developing those and problem solving and breaking down requirements, communicating well, I can train you on anything else. Yeah. So, so 
Go ahead, Lou. Sorry, I was going to say this is not very important, but I was going to say, I guess this is right about now when we start looking at uh, what project management is going to be like in the metaverse. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Great. And I, and I will say I do, I also, I, I do like the virtual space, working from home. It's not a, it has its pros, but it also has its cons because I think that um, it does take a little bit more to form those connections with folks. It isn't as, you know, you, you see them less, you just see people less and that's okay to an extent. But also I think that if you're a person like myself who very much prides himself on his ability to form those relationships and to, and to leverage those relationships to, to elevate the projects that I'm working on, I think that you have to, it's a challenge and you have to double up efforts to, to form those connections via a virtual space. And so maybe the metaverse, like you said, Lily, maybe that'll help it when we have our little avatars and we're, uh, yeah. <laughs> we're in this uh, space together virtually. Even physically. Yeah, no, for sure. I think all jokes aside, though, that's, uh, I think, spot on, Adam. Um, so I spend my days working with clients in the AI space and the data space, like training machines on some, you know, uh, on content, like getting AI to be able to augment stuff. And I will tell you, I think project management is, uh, a lot of it is very people focused and human focused and uh, AI or machine learning is nowhere near to being able to, right. to drive this, right? It is getting there to help us augment some of the tactical stuff, tactile stuff that we, we also don't want to do anyways, um, you know, uh, but when it comes to the actual manage management of like the, the people, the leadership, the communication, the facilitation, the uh, design thinking, all these pieces, we are, we're really nowhere near when it comes to the, the automation and the metaverse. Uh, I'm sure um, Mr. Zuckerberg would disagree, but <laughs> get there we're getting there but it's nonetheless i think it's important to to start thinking in that in that from that perspective that you know we are going to be in the metaverse up, at some point web3 is coming right and then you know thinking about how can we be savvy in that space and how can we use our human capabilities leverage technology to make us more productive optimize us and then uh do our, what we'd like to do best mm -hmm. Great. So as our final question, I wanted to bring it back to something Alicia mentioned earlier. You talked about every four to five months, you switch project teams, you start heading new projects. So that, in my mind, goes to the idea of continuous improvement, continuous development as it relates to your skills, right? And SPMs, we all have uh, this toolbox of skills, techniques, right, that we pulled from. So how do you uh, keep those tools in that toolbox sharp, right? Is it certain trainings that you do? Is it the, the concept of switching projects often, doing different industries, right? What mm -hmm. works in IT may not work in automotive. So mm -hmm. how do you keep those tools sharp? Wow, um, I will be honest, in this last year, it's been a struggle. It really has, because I just have not had time uh, you know, I went through promotion. I was, you know, then now I have direct reports and they were going, you know, one was going through promotion. Um, and so I haven't had as much time to focus on me. I literally had my manager ask me the other day and she's like, well, you know, what's something new that you want to learn? And I'm like, I can't tell you right now. I know it's something, but, you know, unfortunately I'm struggling with that. But one of the things that really benefited me earlier in my career, um, was just, I love Agile DC. Um, I love, you know, I, uh, had my connection through Elite for PMI events. And so, you know, definitely networking at those events, attending conferences, seeking out training. Yes, you can get um, your initial certifications, but there's always, you know, I, I actually enjoy, um, you know, maintaining my PMI and other certifications because it forces me to, to, to stop and listen to a different perspective. Um, and that helps me because yes, I have to kind of hone my skills continuously because I'm not only doing project retrospectives, but I actually led a lessons learned um, just yesterday. Um, for a project so that we could kind of take some lessons into, you know, all of our, you know, next projects. We're all on different ones. So um, it's something that I am having to, to keep in practice, you know, constantly. Um, but I do enjoy um, being able to, you know, log into a conference, even if it's virtual, um, even for half a day, just to hear different perspectives on the field, um, you know, changes in the industry, changes in uh, tools, 
um, new ways of leading retros or, you know, leading teams. Um, so it's, it definitely has to be something that you want to pursue, consistently pursue or continuously pursue. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think I will reinforce the, uh, the most important thing these days is uh, connecting. Uh, it doesn't have to be physically in person, but even virtually with people. Um, so, so go to conferences. There are there are multiple conferences in on, on specifically like project management focused, like uh, the PMI Symposium, uh, Agile DC, as Alicia called out, uh, business agility conferences. So uh, attending those conferences is very important to network. Uh, joining, uh, you know, volunteering with these organizations as well. I was. Uh, on the uh, PMI WDC board for over seven years, uh, that volunteer experience alone created a lot of networking and most of the friends that I've made today. Um, so uh, building that network is a, a, an important thing to give you a window into what everyone is working on, what new tools are on the market. Um, and then lastly, of course, podcasts, uh, listen to podcasts and it doesn't, you know, there are a lot of PM toolkits, podcasts, if you search the, uh, for them, but also sometimes PMing is not necessarily as a project management, but it could also be part of a specific domain. So in the finance space, in the legal space, in technology, uh, there's always a PM conversation around it. So looking for podcasts and listening to uh, uh, these types of resources is something that could keep us uh, abreast. And um, what I love doing, um, uh, similar to Alicia, we have, I have multiple types of different types of projects that are kicking off, that are winding down. I always challenge myself to try a new tool, a new facilitation process of like a retrospective or a project postmortem. Uh, challenge yourself to to do one, diff one thing different, and that will force you to go out there and experiment with something. Um, I would say I would say that you have to view yourself as a like a student, a constant student, never feeling like you've hit a plateau and always looking for different opportunities to learn, whether that be conferences, whether that be training, whether that be reading up on the specific domain that you're the, the field that you're in. And so I will say that I haven't had the opportunity for that much just yet. I'm like I said, I'm four months into my new role. So my priority number one anytime I'm joining in a new position is to be an expert at what I'm doing there and focusing on learning the, the projects that that my company is working on inside and out. And then from there, um, definitely looking for a bunch of different professional development opportunities, because like I said, I, I'm i never going to plateau. I'm never going to know enough. There's always going to be more that I can learn. And so definitely seeking out those opportunities um, as wherever you can find them and as much as your time allows. So I, I'm very much looking forward to that. I think I'll, I'm like starting to get into like hitting my stride and understanding things. I think at the six month mark, that's when I'll be really looking into trying to really focus on my professional development alongside my work. But for now, I'm just focused more so on just being an expert in the projects that I'm managing at the current job that I have. Great. Thank you for those answers. So we do have a couple of questions from the audience. One I'd like to pull from. Uh, project management opportunities as it relates to the international market, right? Lulit, I think you touched on international development, but overall, what does that look like specifically uh, within the international space, if you have any insights to share? Yeah, so um, I had uh, a great experience working at a global organization called Ashoka that's based in, um, in, Ar in Arlington, Virginia. And uh, my experience there, I started as a more of like a project coordinator. And there is a little bit of, you know, um, translating some of the work into technology, but most of it was around the programs within that organization. So it's a social entrepreneurship organization that's um, uh, finding fellows and grant uh, and facilitating grant the grant process. So the project management or the program management aspect of the work is different in a way that um, the stakeholders that you're engaging with are more um, more program focused, more development focused. That's the, the service or the product that they're working on. And then this, the people, the team that is building 
the program around is not necessarily a group of IT specialists, but they are more a group of people who are inventing processes or uh, facilitating conversations. So the nature and the stages of the project, the planning, design, strategy, um, implementation is very different uh, and less tangible, if you will, than a software product. Um, so the way you manage that project, project is very different. So understanding what the phases are, uh, what the engagement models are for stakeholders, what how what your team resources should look like, the skill sets they have, these are the aspects that you would need to answer uh, in the international development space uh, or understand how that world works to be you know to uh, to identify what your value is as a project manager in facilitating these conversations in managing uh, you know budgets, schedule, scope. Uh, scope is very different in the international uh, development space. So i um, happy to chat with uh, anyone who has questions around, you know, specific details in this space. But I think the most important thing is separating, understanding what the differences are. Um, when you are interviewing for a position, for instance, with an organization, it's always important to ask, uh, what does a day in a life look like within this organization? Um, you know, Alicia and I had had the opportunity to work together. We can define one organization, but we are in different places now and our roles are very different. So the, 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 the role is very broad and it could mean anything to any organization. So the first thing I think to understand is what, what is a day in a, uh, in a life? How many hats do you wear? Mm -hmm. What what are you interacting with? What do you mean, you know, like what's scope for you? What's scheduling for you, right? And then also it's important to ask about what does success look like three months from now, six months from now, a year from now, so that you have a very clear way of understanding the role itself, but also a way to measure, measure it, measure progress and see where you are uh, against that. So I would leave it there. I think it's really important to define the role with every organization you speak with, even if it's within the same industry. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. To take another question from the audience, uh, are there any specific online project management courses you recommend? Wow. Um, <laughs> I would say starting with the certifications and they can be expensive. Um, I always advocate for people to, even as part of your interview process, understand what um, the training dollars look like. Um, I was very fortunate, um, you know, and as Lulit mentioned, we were able to pursue our PMP together and that was paid for by our organization. Um, I have several scrum certifications. Those were paid for by my organization because they are expensive. Now, um, I maintain them, but sometimes even that can be, you know, expensed um, in your organization as well. So I think that's a great starting place. Um, but there's a lot of free content, um, especially once you have the certification, both PMI, um, even scrum. They have a lot of free courses that you can take. Um, some of those are on YouTube. Some of those are accessible sometimes through conferences. So um, granted, it's an agile uh, DC based or agile based conference, but I, I typically they hold either like a coaching session or some type of uh, project management based session um, a couple times a year. And so for thirty seven dollars, um, you know, if I book it early enough, I have, you know, that the day of conference, but then I can also go back and look at those sessions later. And again, those, you know, meet my PMI, they meet my SEI requirements. And so I would just say, you know, definitely, you know, leverage your certifications to access free and free courses. Um, but then also just check out YouTube, as Luli mentioned, podcasts. Um, there tends to be a lot of free content out there that's, you know, actually really good that you can leverage to just continually build your skills. And then also, again, um, meet your PMI or SEI requirements. Great. Thanks, Alicia. And one more I wanted to take. Uh, so we have an individual uh, that asked about 
the idea of finding that first role, right? So earlier you talked about you could leverage your certifications, you could, uh, there's a lot of transferable skills and knowledge that you can bring into the field, but maybe speak a little bit more about how you truly find that role, right? In the world of project management, there's so many positions, project coordinator, project administrator, um, controller. So how do you go about any tips or tricks you can give around finding that role? I'll speak of, to how I specifically went about finding my role. And I, and I, for me, it was through LinkedIn. Um, I think if you can network and find and get an opportunity through a person that you know in real life that you've met somewhere in real life, I think that's the best way to, to get an entry into any position. But short of that, I think that um, platforms like LinkedIn can be very helpful. Um, and especially, so for what I did was I realized that I had my LinkedIn up, I had my resume on there, I had my job titles there. And I really, I, I didn't, I hadn't had, I didn't have it built out as much as I should have initially. And I wasn't getting responses that I would have hoped for because I had my resume attached, but I realized that a lot of recruiters on LinkedIn, they're not looking, they don't open up your resume and look at it. They're looking at your profile, skimming your profile just to see your experience there. And so I would say building up your LinkedIn, um, getting LinkedIn premium, because that actually gets you access to um, recruiters. So you can DM them and say, Hey, so, so and so I see this, this role. I see a lot of parallels between my experience. Do you have five minutes to chat? And it just picking and being also intentional about the roles that you're applying to, because not everything is going to work for you. Not every, your skill set is not going to work for everything. Your experience isn't going to work for everything, but there's a lot of opportunities out there. It's a good job market right now. And I would say that you can just like, like we were talking about earlier, if you can highlight as many parallels as you can, look at what they're looking for, see what you've done, and then put those in your LinkedIn explicitly, just like they are in your resume. Emphasize those, list all your skills, and just start trying to make connections via LinkedIn um, When if you can in person. If you can in person, then that's great. But not everybody, I think, has that network to be able to do that. And so I would say what worked well for me was using LinkedIn. I, had, I was applying through other like through other things as well, but that was the most effective because I could, they could, I could, they could put a face to the name. I could DM the recruiters. I could chat, I could chat with them. There was less of a barrier to entry. And so I would suggest that to a lot of folks. And I would say that um, just really looking for the parallels between your experience and, you know, being genuine, but also really selling yourself and not, and, and coming at it with confidence and, you know, just really selling yourself. And so I would say that, Interviewing, interviewing is, you have to be able to interview well. And I think that that in and of itself is a skill that is worthwhile for you to like practice, to get training on in and of itself, because um, that is, that, that'll, that'll make the difference between you getting the job or not. And also, um, so yeah, I, I would just say LinkedIn works, works well, um, just networking and making sure that you're, you're prepared for the interview and you know what you're going to say, you're going to be asking about the role how to be successful, as Lolita was saying earlier, it shows that you're eager and excited to be good at your job. Um, and also that you're not just, that you have, you, you can't come at it as if you're trying to take anything you can get, even if that is the situation that you're in, as some of us were when we were much younger. I think you have to come at it as if, you know, that I am look, I am an asset and proving to them why you are an asset and what ex your experience shows that demonstrates that you're an asset to this company. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, I absolutely agree. And a couple of things I would add to that, just thinking through like the personas of, you know, individuals who are entering into the field, right? If you are um, just right out of college, really entry level um, and looking to explore, uh, you know, an experience, an, an experience or a career in project management, um, I think the first thing that I would say is volunteer or internships, right? Uh, it is okay to build your uh, kind of repertoire, your your full project management experience, um, sometimes just like by volunteering. It is experience, right? Uh, join volunteer organizations, join organizations like PMI, for instance, or the one of the Agile Scrum Alliance uh, to, to have that uh, that experience. They have a lot of needs for volunteer. Uh, and that also gives you access to networks uh, and people. Um, so that's one thing that I would call out. For those people who are shifting from a career uh, to for whatever career that they have is either in a finance or technical or law uh, going into project management be prepared uh, and actually give it some time to think about how your experience translates to project management right because we did talk about at the end of the day we do manage projects throughout our lives we move 
uh, from apartment, from house to house, that's a project to a certain level. So kind of taking the time to translate what, what your experience has been. If, and in law, as you said, you know, uh, you do have to manage, you have to be on time. Um, you have to work with people, uh, the communication, the engagements that you would have with stakeholders, your legal stakeholders, uh, being able to speak in project management terms and translating that into how that has built your experience. When I'm having, I'm always looking for project management, uh, project managers plug right now on our website, we have an agile project uh, manager position that I'm, I'm hiring for. So please reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, but what I want to emphasize is, um, you know, my team members ha are economists or have philosophy backgrounds. It doesn't stop them from being project managers, right? As, as I said, I think it's a matter of going through the exercise of thinking through um, what, what is it that makes you well-rounded because you have that experience. In fact, it adds more value for you to kind of how you see project management. So spend time thinking about how your past experience translates to the future that you want to achieve would be another one that I would add. And I'll add on just a little bit. There were so many good nuggets out of what you all said. Um, I think specifically for someone who is starting early in their career, you know, I this is a personal choice. I'll say that I, I prefer to see people go into some type of business analysis role. It helps you build that domain knowledge that Lulit spoke about. You can't really manage what you don't understand. So in business analysis, you learn how to communicate, how to capture requirements, and eventually you know how to plan those out and how to think through them, right, at a, at a project management level. Um, you know, as you said, if you're switching into a career, both Adam and uh, Lily highlighted, one, understand the role that you're applying for. It's less about the title, but what the type of work that you're doing, and then understand how your experience translates to that. And I'll just, you know, add on, you know, again, um, it doesn't matter what field you come from, even if you are a stay at home mom, you are using project management to plan. So if you're entering it, you know, re-entering the, the workforce, you have an example of how you're planning. I, I have a friend who has four kids with four different schedules. She's a project manager, um, <laughs> you know, outside of her, her day to day nine to five. Um, but um, I think the best thing is what Adam highlighted. I don't really care how experienced you are. If you can't speak well to that in an interview, it, you're not going to get the role. And it doesn't matter if you're new or if you're seasoned. Um, the other thing, and I think that does speak to kind of that five-year shift we talked about earlier, my last three roles have come from LinkedIn. Um, you know, like I said, when I started in project management, I had someone who I'd worked with previously who helped get me in. But that doesn't always happen anymore. And like we said, as we've shifted more to online, you know, having that a strong LinkedIn presence, being able to speak well to your expertise is how you will, you know, definitely land that role. Wonderful. This was such a fruitful and impactful discussion. I know I myself as a PM, I'm just thinking about these nuggets that you guys are are giving out and, and hope to apply in the future. So thank you so much for your impactful and thoughtful, comprehensive answers. Uh, so as behalf of the YEP team, I really do want to extend our thanks. Uh, and I did want to make one final note. As we conclude the discussion, we'd like to announce that we are recruiting for various volunteer positions as well as board member positions. So please visit yepnetwork.org for the application. And as you uh, get to learn more about YEP and stay up to date with us, please do follow us on social media to keep up with our programs and different events. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you at our next. And thank you again, and thank you all for joining. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having Thanks, us. Thanks, everybody.